Hi, I'm Dr. Carla Silas, MD. Uh, I would like to discuss a, a very unique uh, non-essential amino acid called beta alanine. You may or may not have heard of it, but it is probably the biggest breakthrough in sports supplements and sports science that I have seen, and that's been over 25 years. The last biggest breakthrough we had in sports supplements and exercise science was with creatine monohydrate. Now, beta alanine, I think, is by far bigger and better than creatine monohydrate. Well, let, let's just let me get tell you the story. Beta alanine is in our bodies, but however, if you take an extra amount, usually the, the studies that have been done is somewhere between three and a half to six grams a day of, of using it to get the effect that I will discuss. Most companies are making and, and uh, saying use about two grams before you exercise and two grams after. But the story behind it is that beta alanine it goes into your blood, goes into your muscle, combines with a amino acid called L-histidine, H-I-S-T-I-D-N-E, to form L-carnosine, C-A-R-N-O-S-I-N-E. What is, what is L-carnosine? What is good about it? Well, it's also known as an age breaker to break down glycosylated products of aging, which means like intertwining between sugars and proteins. So, so people take it orally. However, if you take it orally for the purpose of, of sports science, I think I think later we'll have studies that this is actually an anti-aging supplement as well. The reason being L-carnitine when it builds up in muscle causes a buffering of acid, pH buffer. So as you exercise, over time you build up lactic acid. Your acid level of blood builds up. You eat, let's say you eat a bad diet of sugar and much red meat, your acid levels build up, you have an acid level in your blood, in the urine, etc. Not healthy. So for the exercise person, you can, by the capacity of buffering with beta alanine, converting to L-carnosine, exercise longer before you get hitting the wall or really tired, and you exercise more intensively. Now this has been researched by very good researchers in the United Kingdom, at the University of uh, Oklahoma, Jeff Stout. Uh, doctor, and other doctors who are very well respected in their fields of nutrition and exercise science. Beta alanine, I use it. When I when you first take it, you first feel a little tingle in your face. You feel like a little bit of nice and prickle, but that goes away. And I've used the different kinds of products out there. There's about five or six that I know of, and I have found myself when I exercise. I'm exercising 45 minutes and I go, gee, I'm still not tired, I can exercise another 20 minutes. And I'm really pushing weights really hard or doing some other exercise. Why? Well, the, the explanation is because I'm not getting into this level of acid production. Now, if you look at evolution and uh, who has, what is, which animal or mammal, let's say, has the highest carnosine in their muscle is the whale. Now, this is pretty, in a way, interesting and logical that the whale that has to go underground without any oxygen is going to build up acid, but it has a buffering capacity before it comes up and get air, and it's probably through L-carnosine build up in the muscle via beta alanine. In terms of, um, let's say, anti-aging, there are conditions of acidosis where some people produce so much acid that it causes leaching of bone out of your body, so there could be a role of using beta alanine to, to slow down or maybe mitigate the process of osteoporosis and many other acid producing conditions of the body. So having an acid diet, acid too much in the body, not good, you need some. But I don't want to emphasize that point until the data studies have been done, but I think there will be or should be uh, studies done on it because acid balance, pH balance in the body and medicine are very highly important. The more we can, let's say, well, in the exercise world, you know, the more we strain, stress, work out hard, well, you hit the wall, called acid, the lactic acidosis. Well, this can be mitigated or slowed down by beta alanine through the carnosine uh, buildup cycle. And I use it, as I said before. My wife uses it. We go to the gym. We're pumping weights. And I'm looking at the clock. Not tired. Still pumping. Finally, you get tired and quit. But it's certainly, I think, 
I've been using my patient as well. It gives you about 15 to 20 percent increased gain in the, the length of workout and maybe the strength or intensity. By intensity, for me at least, it's like I lift weights at 100 pounds. All of a sudden, I'm going at 130. Go, oh, whoa, I didn't lift 130 before. It doesn't feel that bad. So I'm not trying to sell a product. I'm just trying to sell, give you information. I mean, there is, uh, so look at, look at the literature on, on, on beta alanine, A-L-A-N-I-N-E, and beta, B-E-T-A. I mean, there's, there's like one product which I, it's called X, Intra XL. This is a beta alanine product. This is in capsules, a lot come in powders. It comes time, sometimes they're mixed with like L-carnosine, histidine, creatine monohydrate. This one just happens to be mixed with lipoic acid and N-acetylcysteine. I've used it, it's good. The others, I've, I've had other people using the other products, they're good as well. Some have stimulants in it. So, this one I kind of like myself because for patients, because it doesn't have, some people are very sensitive to stimulants. Some people like stimulants. Coffee, we know, if we were talking about ergogenic aid, the oldest ergogenic aid we have is coffee. I mean, I drink a cup of coffee, 200 milligrams of caffeine is well, very well studied as improving exercise performance. Now, if you, if you combine that with L-carnosine, if you're one of those types that can handle the caffeine, I think you've got a pretty good workout. Now, what are some of the negative effects? Well, so far, I, I don't see there are any negative effects in terms of the literature, myself, the people using. This has been out, out, out over a year, this product. I'm not selling product, I'm selling information, I'm just giving you information. I think it's, for me at least, I'm going to keep using it and studying it and write about it and talk about it because I've never seen, and I've had 30 years of sports medicine, I've never seen anything like it before. So I'm, I'm very, very impressed. And if you want to go to the literature, go to PubMed, look up Jeff Stout, Dr. Harris from Chichester University, United Kingdom. You'll see a bunch of studies on, uh, you know, competitive athletes and other people. It's the literature is there. So, all I can say, this is something for you who like to exercise or it's certainly worth a try.